Hey guys, Jared here, Magnetic Men's Club. Hope everyone's doing well. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a current subscribe member, welcome back. Today's video, we're gonna talk about a common dating mistake most men make, I know I certainly have back in the day, and that mistake is hiding who you truly are, hiding your authentic self, or to put it another way, presenting an image of yourself that isn't necessarily true. If you ever felt the need to be someone you're not just to impress a potential partner, this video is for you, so let's jump right in. The problem with this dating approach ties into the idea that you need to fit a box or you need to fit a certain mold to date successfully. But while some people focus a lot on like impressing people with their status and their wealth, others hide or downplay their true selves. If you ever met somebody who exaggerated their accomplishments or tried to create a false front just to kind of seem more appealing, <clears throat> maybe you've done this yourself. I know I certainly have in the past. Shit, I remember I tried to learn to play the guitar. My younger brother is a great guitar player. Um, he's, he's a pretty good musician. Like He can kind of play most instruments or at least get by. And so I'm fucking tone deaf. I guess I just don't have good coordination and Probably, to be honest with you, I didn't really care enough to, to play proficiently. But I once said I was a, mus a musician just to kind of get in this girl's pants. And I'm thank God she didn't ever ask me to play the guitar. We just talked about the guitar and, and then one thing happened to another and yeah. That's, that's a whole different, probably for a whole other video, but I've certainly have pretended to be somebody or maybe exaggerate something I've done in order to impress somebody else. I also love to take photos. Uh, I'm a decent photographer. I mean, I'm not a professional or anything like that, but I was a professional one time to this gorgeous girl who wanted a photo shoot. And I, I was like, yeah, yeah, come to my studio, blah, blah, blah. I created this kind of studio. There was nothing sexual there, but she was just gorgeous. I wanted to spend some time with her. So um, I became a professional photographer uh, for her. So, you know, at some point, I, I've been a dirtbag, you know, I fluffed the truth back in the day. I've never claimed that I was a saint. Nobody is, and I'm sure you're not as well. But maybe you didn't do anything like this, uh, but I am sure some of you have hidden aspects of yourself, thinking nobody could possibly like that side of you. I'm guilty of this as well. Maybe you worry that liking certain things is weird. Maybe you have a weird hobby that you like, but you kind of keep it to yourself for fear of rejection from other people. A lot of nerds, you know, they like to play different video games, Dungeons and Dragons and all this stuff, but they will secretly hide that around a girl who they like because they don't want to come across geeky. They don't want to come across as a nerd. So I remember for me, I'll give you another, I guess I'm, I'm storytelling today. I'm sharing. I loved to play. I still love to play chess. And in middle school, I was actually pretty good at it. I was never a wizard or grand, whatever the hell, but I enjoyed playing it. I played it in six, seventh and eighth grade on a chess club. And then I got into high school and chess became geeky or the, the idea of chess became geeky uh, to that social group of people I was trying to impress. So I used to still play it, but at home, and I sort of hid that part 
about me until I got a little bit older and I really just didn't give a shit. And then I found out there was a lot of people who actually love chess. And there's a lot of girls that I've dated or I've talked to, they love chess, they just never played it. So I had the opportunity to teach what I think is probably one of the best games ever to these women. And I hope now that they're out there playing it and, and, and enjoying the game because it is a really good game. So I have hidden what I thought was perceived as dorky or geeky in the past out of fear of rejection or fear of judgment for other people. And so I guess part of the takeaway on that is don't feel like you must avoid the things that you love. Uh, it could be particular books that you like, games, maybe certain types of movies you like, maybe you have a collection again. Whatever it is, don't perceive that because you like this and it does seem to be off because it's not a conventional norm or it's not talked about a lot, that it's not manly enough. One of the things I like to try to educate on this channel is this idea of alpha male. And if you don't subscribe to these specific qualities, you're not man enough. That's complete bullshit. You are every bit of as a man as the quote alpha guy who is jacked and ripped and all that. You're just a different type of man, but you still have value. You still have worth as a man. You might want to um, level up some areas that you're a little bit short in, and that's why you're watching this channel. Maybe you're, um, maybe you're struggling in something right now, and you're trying to look for uh, a solution to a dating problem. But this is not your this is not your problem. Hiding who you are is never a solution to truly trying to connect with people. And so I want that to be a biggest takeaway from you because it always backfires. By not being your authentic self, you make it impossible to find people with whom you generally be compatible to. Pretending to be somebody else was well, only going to ensure that you'll attract the people who would not appreciate the real you. So you're creating this false front. You're creating this avatar of yourself that isn't congruent with who you are. And this is what creates that, that imbalance in your life where you may have people that like you, but they like the version of you that you're presenting that isn't really you. And by hiding that version of you that is you, you're actually creating violence upon yourself and the possible new people you could make who would actually like that version of you much better than this fake version of you. You've probably heard your mom, my mom used to say this all the time. I was raised largely by my mom. Um, I did have a father, but I was raised and I talked a lot about dating and stuff um, with my mom. And that's probably part of why I was so blue-pilled and, and now I'm a little bit different now. But the point is, you probably all heard this before, and I know it's probably been from your mom and it's probably been from women, is just be yourself. And then you probably rolled your eyes, just like I'm rolling them now. When people say this, what they really mean though, from what I've kind of gathered and what I, my takeaway on that saying is, don't try to be somebody you're not just to impress others. If you ignore that simple advice, you will always have dating frustrations and failures. You always will. So the truth is, hiding your authentic self actually pushes you away from potential partners who would greatly appreciate and love the person who you are. Think about it this way, hiding your geeky interests makes it harder for geeky partners to connect with you. Pretending you're less sensitive, maybe you're a sensitive guy, I'm particularly not, but you're still a guy, but maybe you are a little bit more sensitive, that's completely fine, but pretending you're not will only mean people looking for that emotional connection will miss out on you because you've hidden it. Being authentic stands on its own and it attracts those people who would find you 
irresistible just the way you are. So you don't have to pretend who you are. I promise you there are women out there who will love you or like you in, in the beginning by who you are and then they can grow into love you because you're not creating a false front. You're not creating an avatar or a fake version of yourself. She actually gets to see the real version of you day one. And so that you don't have to put up the front day 90 or six months in. You don't have to keep pretending who you are because you were the person day one. And so there's something incredibly attractive about someone who loves what they love and isn't afraid to show it. So if you love romance movies, maybe you're a dude and you love romance movies or romance comedies, don't hide it. Women like that shit too, it's fine. My point is be authentically you because you are the only you. Why would you wanna be a carbon copy of everybody else out there? Why would you want to be a version of literally every alpha man out there where certain influencers will tell you you have to act like this and then you go out and act like this and you still don't have meaningful connections. You still don't have incredible relationships with men or women, they're shallow. Well, this is what they're teaching you, so you need to understand that. By being your authentic self also means you're allowing other people around you to be their their authentic self. So the takeaway on this, my friends, is drop the facade and embrace your authentic self. Drop this bullshit version of who you think you should be and embrace the person you are. Yes, level up on your shortcomings. I always advocate to be the best version of yourself, but that's what I mean, the best version of yourself, not the best version of who you think you should be, the best version of who you are. Thanks for watching this. If you like this video, if you like content like this, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave me a comment. And of course, hit that bell icon so you know when new videos are being dropped. My name is Jared Schumacher. This is the Magnetic Men's Club, and we'll see you in the next video.